Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Givlin Gals Good News. I have Donna here with me today. I'm so excited to introduce you to her. Donna, Donna is the creator of a new online course called Wired to Heal, released Monday, May 15th next week. Wired to Heal is Donna's background experience coming together. She's been a high school teacher and an instructor of television communications at what is now Mount Royal University in Calgary. She has a lot of media experience as a journalist and a producer with CBC Television and as a Canadian field producer with ABC News. Good morning, America. She is now an energy healer, helping people use their inner abilities to heal themselves. Good morning, Donna. How are you? I am great. And I thank you very much for having me on your Givlin Gals Good News podcast. I love your title. I love it. And thank you for having me here. No problem. Thank you so much for your energy and for being here. I'm so excited you could be here and have my listeners tune in. So I'm very excited. Um, can you tell us what is Wired to Heal and how did it come about? I am happy to tell you. Uh, Wired to Heal is basically about how we can use our words, our thoughts, and our emotions to help us heal ourselves. Um, and that what that does, it takes me to who I am, Donna Kurczynski, uh, the, a description of me through the lens of this course. Um, as you mentioned in your introduction, Victoria, it was like coming together, like a vortex of my life experience of uh, teaching or education, of television and media production, and of healing. Uh, it is amazing how pieces of your life come together together using your past experiences and it takes kind of a life of its own first of all i'll talk a little bit about my teaching uh as we know teaching as we traditionally know it is information sharing it's providing it's having an intrinsic understanding of of who your audience is in this case it's your students obviously and it's having them understand what they're learning that is a big word, understand, and having them absorb what they're learning. Uh, besides teaching at Mount Royal, I uh, taught high school one year, and I have a story about that. One of my classes was a grade 11, uh, was grade 11 English, uh, and the students were mostly boys. It was a trade school, and they were enrolled, they were not an academic stream, they were enrolled in automotives or machinery or carpentry and other technical things. And so I asked myself, how in the world do you teach a group of boys, mostly technical people, how to structure a paragraph? So what we did, we did a little exercise and I asked them, what are you most interested in? Well. You know, I thought it would be something technical about how to change a tire. No, no, no. It was girls. So I said, okay, tell me about whatever sentences come to your mind about girls. And we kept it clean. <laughs> I invited them to give me their sentences and their whatever they thought. And they shouted them out and I wrote each one on the board. And they, they were good. They were good. Uh, they gave me physical descriptions. They gave them, me personalities, their intelligence. And I just kept on writing those sentences and writing and writing on the board. And then when we finished, we said, okay, what have we got here? We've got a theme. And if I recall, that was quite a few years ago. The theme was, it was the kind of girl I would like to meet. And then from that, we created a topic sentence. And then all of a sudden, we, we arranged the sentences that flowed. And we said, okay, let's put this sentence here and here. And I showed them that what they had done as a group, they created a paragraph. Now, had I asked them, if I come, walked in the room and said, okay, guys, uh, today I want you to write a paragraph about something you're interested in. They'd look at me blindly, and, you know, their eyes would roll in their head and, you know, they'd complain. And then they created a paragraph. They could more easily understand the anatomy of that paragraph. What went into it? What is the topic sentence? What is the theme? And then they said to me, Miss Karchinski, you tricked us. 
<laughs> I didn't trick them. I made it fun for them. And that is the clue. And it was an emotional experience and it was relevant to them. And that for me was the basis what I believed education was. It's how the body is absorbing information. It's not just on the top of your head. It's what touches the emotions and what means something to them, their world of experience. But it was fun. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I was using my intuition to make it meaningful for them and relevant for them. That's Another amazing. thing that I learned about myself um, and how the learning process works and I've used that in my course as well, is that people learn in different ways. They learn visually, they see the words, or they see uh, an experience, something in front of them, visual, or they learn through audio, through hearing, or they learn through their emotions. So with this same class of boys, I would ask them to read a novel. Well, some of them read it, maybe half of them would read it, but I realized this was not going going to happen so what I did I would read to them in class and then we talk about the book about what we read and then I learned something more when they were asked about that particular book on their exams those are the questions they did best on by hearing the words and more than that I learned later that my voice helped them to learn I remember that piece when I was writing Wired to Heal, because when we talk about how the cells in the body learn, they learn by the sound or the vibration of the voice. And those boys were learning. And the other part of it was so interesting because when I was reading, they were quiet. They were quiet. Most of the time, they were not so quiet. They were hard to keep under control. But boy, when I read to them, it was almost like reading a lullaby to them. Then, then I move over to my journalism, my experience in journalism. And there are so many sides to that that helped me put together Wired to Heal. In journalism, I uh, ended up being an investigative reporter. I was fascinated by information. I was always hungry for information. Not just information that comes like in a press release, but information that you dig up. And then when I was doing the work, uh, you know, at that time there was no internet. So I used the library a lot. Uh, but most of my information came from people, from people who wanted the truth out in the open. So you learn a lot of people skills, a lot how to talk to people, how to get their trust. Again, I believe now, looking back, I was using my intuition a lot. Uh, then, you know, we, uh, besides that, in television, you pick up all the technical things of how to do sound, how to do uh, the visuals, what's a good picture, what's editing. But then I realized I was using my intuition again. Um, there was a story, I remember I was sent out to do uh, an interview with, uh, with a group of people, mostly males, who were uh, picketing in front of a store that sold uh, pornographic materials, magazines mostly. And when I went there, my gut told me, my intuition told me, um, these uh, folks are not for real. So I started questioning them. And I admit, I became a little aggressive when I, when I didn't feel that they were quite real. And what came out was they were unemployed people who were picked off the street and paid to pick at this store. So when the story aired, uh, we got complaints about my interviewing. <laughs> that I was too aggressive and my producer called me into his office and asked me, um, and I said, look, they were lying. And when people lie to me, I become an attack dog. I'm sorry, I, I do not, I, I, but I could sense it, I knew it. So here I was using my intuition again. And I, when I look back at that, yeah, yeah, I did that, I did that. And then the third piece of my background is my energy healing work. And part of the work I do is an energy here is, is a you learn a technique, basically. And there are so many really, really good techniques. Um, I took a, uh, courses in this, and what you do, you basically just clear negative energies out of that person's energy area, or some people call it the aura, 
and then the, the person's body can heal itself. You clear a path for the good energy to flow throughout that body. And it does. And some people do get better. Now, here is where I knew I had to produce this course, Wired to Heal, through my energy work. Because there are some people who truly believe they cannot or will not heal. It's either in their belief system where it's off kilter or some believe they do not deserve to heal, believe it or not. Or maybe their medical professional tells them they will not get better. They will say there is no cure for what you have. Or maybe it's simply some people thrive on, on their illness. Some people thrive on being sick. They get a lot of attention. People feel sorry for them. They take them to places. They, they bring them meals. They, they develop a persona around their illness. And you're not going to get those people better. So if a doctor, for example, tells a person there's no cure for your condition, um, I, the scientists will say that that statement alone can be a death sentence for the person and the killer of their hope. So I started researching the subject of healing. And I learned that we, as patients, are part of a healing team. Like you and I, we go to a doctor and uh, we may have some lab tests done. The lab people are part of the healing team. You may go to a specialist. They're part of the healing team. You may go to a natural healer and they're part of your healing team. But I want to instill in people that they themselves are just as an important part of their own healing team. And they need to take responsibility for their own healings. And they can change the course of their healings. And the reason is, and here's where the course comes in, our cells have brains. And I was, you know, when I started reading this in the research, they have brains. Yes, they do. They hear us speak. They respond to our thinking even. And they sense our feelings. I use an example in one of my modules of prayer. I found out is one of the most effective methods of talking to yourselves. You're talking to your creator, your God, but you're also talking to yourselves. So if you start praying and you say, please, Lord, heal me, or please, creator, heal me. But supposing in your mind, you're thinking, well, my doctor told me this is not curable. That negative thought is going to override your prayer. And your plea to your creator, even though uh, if you maintain your meditation or even your prayer, there is a change in your brain waves. And that, for me, was really, really interesting. And um, the other thing that scientists are telling us is that our brain can only hold one thought at a time. So if you're thinking while you're praying, my doctor told me this is incurable. <laughs> The prayer is kind of squeezed out and your healing may not happen. Um, I use another example. Supposing there is about, about the fact that you can't, you can't hold two ideas in your brain at once. I thought, oh, you know, we're getting pretty good at multitasking. But here's another argument on the other side of it. Uh, I use this example. Supposing there is a team of people working on a very important, exciting program. And there's a team, they're in a, pro they're working on a project and they're in an office building and everything's going really well. The pieces are coming together and they can smell their success. They know it's going to be a good thing for the company and for them. But all of a sudden they smell smoke and the fire alarm goes off and they need to get out of that building if they want to survive. So the focus of the group is no longer the project, it's survival. So it's either one or the other. What is it? You're gonna choose survival. It's the same thing with your brain. It's only one thing you can choose at that time. So, um, so throughout my healing work, I started paying more attention to how people heal, how and why, and when does it happen? I often realize that people do not realize that 
as I mentioned, they can have a part in their own healing and that they can heal in spite of all the odds against them. And uh, what I do in the course is help them to put some of those techniques together. And that's how it came together. That's fascinating. Thank you so much. I am such an advocate as an energy worker myself. Energy is so important and the affirmations and the words that you tell yourself. And yes, you can. Like the mind is such an incredibly powerful tool that the rest of the cells and the the brain cells in the cells themselves will be listening to. Um, And Yeah, it's true. I would always say I could multitask really well. And now I've realized with what you've been saying and other studies, I'm like, no, like you can only do one thought at a time. So finish what you're doing and then on to the next one. So you can successfully complete these tasks to the best of your ability. So that's really cool. Thank you. So um, given your varied background, what advice would you have for other small business owners? I have this passionate, passionate feeling that we need to listen. We need to listen carefully to what people say, to how they say it. If you can, if you're there with them, watch them, learn from them, watch their body language, watch their eyes. Are they looking at you? Then use their own words and ask them questions about themselves. I have, I actually have lectured on this and ask as many questions as you can, stemming from what their statement, their previous statement has been. And you can always find gems that can help you become a better and a more sensitive business person, no matter what business you're in. And your clients will appreciate you all the more because they will know that you are interested in them you are listening to them and do not worry about your own credentials, about your degrees or your certificates. They do not care. They want to know how they can, that how you can help them. Uh, Your credentials are not as important as the other person's wants and their needs. And you are there to fill their wants and not to impress them about how smart you are. So that, that's one piece of advice I am passionate about. And uh, that, I learned that in my journalism, and that has served me well. That's awesome. Yeah, I find the university degree or whatnot will show you that to the employer, you can execute tasks from start to finish, and you have excellent listening skills perhaps, but ultimately being there and nobody, you don't meet a client or a person and they go, oh, you know, what's your education level off the bat? Typically they want to know, you know, how, what's going on and how can I help you? How can I serve you? And actively listening to them and being able to sympathize with their feelings and give back to them and really show that you care and that you were actively listening, not just listening to respond, but you were paying attention to what they were saying is so critical and will show that support all the way back and give you that sort of best client relationship and just best relationship in general in any aspect of your life. So that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a story where, you know, you just go on, uh, you have a list of questions. You just go on to your next question without listening to the last one. And some pretty awful things can happen out of that. (laughs) But anyway, that's, uh, yeah, that's my passion. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. The, uh, I what's the saying there's two ears and one mouth do it proportionally use them proportionally and you can tell when somebody's actively listening or when they're just waiting for their turn to open their mouth and speak right out again like jumping to the next question if they're not finishing what they've just been listening to and responding back to with the person that they're with so absolutely absolutely who is your target audience for the Wired to Heal course? Basically, it's it's people who feel that they're not getting better. Uh, they're not healing and they're, they're not satisfied with how their healing is going. 
uh, they, and they don't understand why. Uh, it's people who are stuck in their lives or they have doubts about their own healing and about their own power about the healing, as you mentioned, you know, the power of the brain. Uh, and they're negative about their healing, but they're negative about everything in life. Um, and they have lost hope about their own healing. They feel down, they feel depressed, and they have little faith about their healing. Yeah, the world can definitely sweep you off your feet, not in a great way. And sometimes, you know, you'll get knocked down and you can handle it. And what's the saying? I always try to live this way. It's like fall down seven times and get back up eight. But there are times where you go down and you don't jump right back up because it's hard <laughs> to be able to uh, come back and having that support and knowing that you can. I know personally, I had like a really bad car accident a few months before COVID. And I was, this was my spiritual awakening. I was stuck in a dark room or on the floor, not able to move or turn, just crying in so much pain. And I definitely felt, I was like this, like for over a year, I was like, is this it? Like, is this, this is the end. This, when does it stop? It's never going to stop. And that's not true. And meditation and breath work and affirmations were a huge source of changing my brain and rewiring my life and moving forward. So, wow, wow, that would have been a tough time. My gosh. Yikes. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really rough, but I hear I, I want that to be inspirational to other people. And I hear other stories about hardships that others have gone through. And I'm just, I'm astounded by the resilience and the beauty that people come through on the other side of their difficulties and how they motivate others to do it. So, But your story, that is exactly what we're, we're trying to get across in this course. Exactly. You know, and, and somebody who's overcome what you have done. It is so amazing. I definitely had, thank you, my my healers, my healing team. A big component to that was my friend Karen Leslie, who was an energetic worker. But I also had a woman who wasn't even my insurance broker for my car insurance because it was a car accident. She just saw me one day. I was in a business meeting pushing through as I do. You know, I'm going to keep going. And yeah. my eyes wouldn't stop rolling in the back of my head. So I had to do oh. this like the whole business meeting. Oh, no. <laughs> and she just, you know, it's that team. So having someone on your team, like you in their corners, just so incredible. She came over and she was like, look, like, what's happening what's going on what sort of coverage are you getting she didn't get any financial compensation for any of it because it wasn't with the same company it wasn't the same insurance broker but she's like look like she became part of my team she's like i need i need to help you please please let me help you and wow. uh yeah finding those people that you can lean on being able to go through something like your wild to heal course and having you in their corner is so helpful so thank you uh, what advice can you give to people who do want to heal then? Well, I think that you have really answered that question but <laughs> by what you have done. Uh, but my suggestion is you start simply. You don't try to do everything. The first thing is you stop and you listen to yourself. What is your, your self-talk? Listen to your words. What do you say out loud? Are they negative? Uh, how do you feel about yourself? And then what, if you start just by practicing, by turning every negative that you think or you say into a positive, just that alone, and then use repetition, repeat it over and over and over again. And that is what I'm emphasizing in the course through all the modules. If you find words positive words and I and I give some positive phrases out repeat and repeat and repeat and I like you I had to do that myself I was researching this course my husband became very ill and he was hospitalized for 10 weeks and he never did come home he died on February of 2022 a little over a year ago and boy was I stressed and I was burned out. So 
what I did, I turned to the techniques that I learned from my research on this course. And it got me through very tough and stressful times. And to this day, it's still helping me. And I believe that I was meant to be doing this work at this time. That was my lesson. But it certainly did help me, as, as it did you. And I'm very moved by your story, Victoria. I'm very moved by your story too. And I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry about your husband. That is, that's what I mean. Like this, it's those, like, I am <laughs> lost for words here. Like, that's okay. That's okay. Oh my goodness. I, I've been lost for words a lot of times, but you know, I just believe that uh, there is, there is a higher power above us guiding us all the time and I think that is that helps me and it gives me strength and I just believe that um, being positive and asking for help asking anybody ask the universe ask the, anybody ask friends ask uh, your neighbors <laughs> I have the most amazing neighbors because they uh, they fed me during this whole time because otherwise I wasn't cooking it wasn't, I was hardly eating, but my neighbors were there for me. But, you know, you just, you, you reach out and it works. It works. I am so happy that your neighbors were there. I absolutely, I love community and I love the residential communities and that's where my magazines go. And that's the whole thing is connecting the neighbors. So I'm so happy that you had that and that yeah. they were there for you and supporting you and they were part of your healing team. That's wonderful. So they were, so they are. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about what these modules are? Yeah, there's five of them. Uh, one is, uh, the first one is how you can actually, uh, how it works, uh, how you can change your, your uh, how you can affect your healing by changing your words, your thoughts, and your emotions. And I go through examples. And uh, the second is how stress can uh, hinder your healing and how getting rid of stress uh, can help your healing. But stress is a huge, huge uh, part of it. And then your belief systems, how they can interrupt your healing. For example, if you were told as a child, oh, you'll never amount to much. You know, that, that, those phrases, that, excuse me, those words stick in your cells for your lifetime. And so we work at removing some of those belief systems. Um, and then uh, the other one is how your faith and a higher power, your creator, your God can help you to heal and how you can use, you know, the power of meditation and of prayer. And the last one uh, was, the, was actually the hardest one for me to write because I learned so much. I thought it was simple, but it is not. And it's on forgiveness. And uh, forgiveness is how you can uh, regain your power to heal when you forgive. Because if you hold a grudge in your heart, you are not healing. But when you forgive, you release that grudge, you release that negativity, and then your body heals. But that, and as I learned, is the hardest, one of the most difficult things to do, but it can be done. I've got uh, an explanation of all that on my website. It's uh, wiredtoheal.ca. So it's, uh, yeah, that is critical. It's uh, like you said, holding on, the beliefs are huge and things, that's why I love affirmations because there are things that I was hardwired to believe from, you know, just different life experiences. I was bullied a lot. Um, so just handling that's why I was having troubles with my relationship so much was finding the belief that I was worthy of the things that I wanted and that I deserve to be happy and that my needs shouldn't be put behind someone else's wants in a relationship at the end of the day. So 
That's so important. And learning to forgive because holding on to that resentment, holding on to that anger and forgiving yourself too, like forgiving other people for doing those things, but also forgiving for me, like forgiving myself for putting myself through those things. Like I look back to the things that I got tangled up in, in my early twenties and I'm like, Oh my word. Like (laughs) I, it's it's so hard like I've spent half my life in relationships that weren't great for me because I just have these beliefs and now I'm going through this whole thing about learning to forgive myself and really embracing the time that I have so that sounds fascinating with those modules thank you yes yes yes. is yeah no problem is the course available now yeah um, the uh, you can subscribe to the course. Uh, the it will be released uh, on Monday, the fifteenth of May. Um, the modules will be released on that day. So, and you can go to my site. As I mentioned, it's wired to heal dot ca. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, definitely go and check that out and subscribe. That's really awesome. Um, and. Oh, those five different steps are so important, like your faith, your beliefs, the the words. And I find that as I am right now, like gratitude is so important. And I'm so grateful for you for being here and for giving us your time and for helping people rewire the way that they might see their life and moving out of that victim mentality or that sick person mentality and realizing like that is a component of your life but it doesn't have to be the definition of it and who you are you can and are able to with your team and with your self-beliefs and your faith in the higher power and forgiveness move move forward and have this new miraculous opportunity to your life thank you victoria no problem so in terms of uh, your Facebook live presentation that you're doing, what can people expect from that? They can expect sort of how it'll work, that they can sign up uh, as some of the technical parts of it. They sign up and they will get, a, um, they, they will get all five uh, modules at once and they can do them in their own time. And they, but they can also respond and ask questions. And I, I have, a, I will have. They will be subscribed to a Facebook page, uh, a group page that is exclusive to the subscribers. And then we will have, uh, um, you know, we we will share ideas and answer questions. And there is a workbook, as I mentioned. And I also have. Uh, I've also put. I'm also putting up a, a bibliography of the books and all the websites that I've been to. Uh, so if people want to do further research on that or check my facts, <laughs> they, can, they can do that. And so I, I, I just wanted to share all this information because it is so, it, it really is at a certain level, it's cutting edge stuff. And um, I, the medical profession, I think is starting to realize that this is important. And I think that they will, uh, I, I want it to be something that people can take and ab- absorb. And that's uh, that's the point I'm going to be making with the uh, with the Facebook Live. Just what can they get out of it? Or they can get whatever they want, actually. <laughs> that's awesome. It's It's like those books that you used to read where you can choose. I love those books. You choose your own adventure. You can take... Mm-hmm you know, you'll, you'll at the very least get a wonderful introduction to a beautiful person being yourself, Donna Korczynski, and you will have a interesting and new mindset to the healing that you can undergo. And from there, it's up to you on how involved you want to be. But thank you so much for being here, Donna. Is there any last uh, moment or last bit of advice that you would like to leave for our listeners? I just, just love yourself. That's it. I love that. Love yourself. It's the most important thing that you can do for your life. It is.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Donna, so much for being here for the Givlin Girls Good News. Everybody go check out Donna Korczynski and look at her course that's coming out the day after Mother's Day. That's so exciting. Um, and what an appropriate theme. So um, thank you for your time. I'm so grateful for you and for sharing some of your knowledge with us. So I hope you have a wonderful day and all the best with your course launch. Thank you.